Naomi, I need to you to drive tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Hello, mother-in-law. I have plans tomorrow, so it's difficult for me to drive. I can pick you up in the evening, though. Plans? What kind of plans would a housewife like you have? Yes, I do have some plans. Then you should reschedule those plans. My shopping is more important. Do you want to go shopping? That's right. I won a gift card at the neighborhood association event the other day. I thought it would be nice to go to the new shopping center in the next town. You recently got the gift card, so it should not be invalid so soon, right? Would it be okay to go on another day? I want to go tomorrow. Mood is important for those kind of things, right? That must be true, but I'm sorry, but I think it might be difficult. Naomi, have you forgotten what you say to me? When you, a low-educated person, married my highly educated son, you said you'd try to be accepted by me, right? Yes. If you refuse my request, you'll be far away from the line gradually. But are you okay with that, Helena? I must say I don't just do whatever you ask because I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be accepted as my husband's wife. So it depends on how devoted you are to me. Supporting your husband is a given for a wife. But I have an important plan tomorrow. I'm sorry, but I would like you to reschedule your plan. Ah,、uh, you're stubborn. I'm telling you, I want to go tomorrow. I'm sorry. Listen, my son is high income elite. He is not embarrassing whenever he goes. You are lucky to marry to such a son, you know. Normally, people like you wouldn't get a second look, but my son married you, and who gave birth to and raised that kind of son? You did, mother-in-law. Right? Then you should understand that my words are absurd. My son listens to everything I say. Ah, but he didn't defy me about marrying you. I really wonder why he chose you. Ask my husband about that. There's no way he is going to give me an answer. I accept. Anyway, prioritize my shopping tomorrow. Um, as I've said, it's really impossible. If it's another day, I'll definitely clear my schedule. Don't you understand when I tell you not to talk back? This is why I found people with low intelligence troublesome. There's no point in talking. Remember this if you don't show up tomorrow. I will never recognize you as a wife. Naomi, listen. I bought some supplements from a friend the other day, but the payment turned out to be higher than I thought. I wouldn't have enough money for living expense this month. Is that so? Have you consumed all the supplements? No, not yet. Then how about proceeding with a refund? Can't you cool off? Excuse me. What are you talking about? You want me to return what I've already purchased? Yes, because you can't pay for it, right? I think you have no choice but to do so. Are you trying to embarrass me? I bought it from a friend. I'm not going to return it, am I? Then what are you going to do? Well, my son should just send me your money. I need six hundred dollars, please. Six hundred dollars? 
I never heard of that supplement that costs that much. It's very good for my health. Only special people can buy it. Helena, could you have been scammed? It sounds a bit suspicious to me. There's no way I could be fooled by normal people. Besides, it's a person I trust and always buy products from, so he won't scam me. I know I couldn't talk to you. Is my Sam back yet? He is still not home. Yes, he seems to be busy these days. Ever since he married you, I feel like my Sam has become busier. He hardly even answers my calls. And he often doesn't reply, doesn't he? He just stop busy. Well, I guess so. My son seems to have an annual income of one hundred fifty thousand dollars, so I suppose he is that busy. What? One hundred and fifty thousand dollars? My husband? Yes. Remember when I visited your house last year? I saw his tax return. He seems to earn quite a bit. I'm proud as his mother. Oh, I see. So for my son, six hundred dollars is nothing, right? I'm not sure about that. Helena, you've been borrowing money from my husband for a while now, haven't you? So what? Even dust burned pile up becomes a mountain. We can't hand out hundreds of dollars that often. It can be helped. We need money to live. Then please get a job. Are you kidding me? I raised my son all by myself, you know. Are you telling me to work now? Father-in-law passed away after my husband became an adult, didn't he? And even if you have a long history as a housewife, there are various jobs available now. Shut up! Just hurry up and send me the money. I can't. This won't be good for both you and us in the long run. Besides, supplements are something we can live without, aren't they? There's no need to borrow money to buy them. How dare you? You don't want to give my son's money to me, do you? You are trying to monopolize it, aren't you? That's not the case. Then I want to one thousand and five hundred dollars. What? From now on, send me one thousand and five hundred dollars every month. This is a decided matter. What are you talking about? I'll be holding back until now, but I should have done this from the beginning. It's a hustle to ask for small amount of money every time. So from now on, send me an allowance. I'll also contact my son about this. Helena, please stop. What's impossible is impossible. How many times do I have to tell you not to talk back to me? A bad daughter-in-law shouldn't defy her mother-in-law. If there's no arrangements, I'll divorce you and my son. Naomi, I checked the account again today, but there is no money transferred. Yes, because I didn't transfer it. Are you still saying such a thing? My son has an annual income of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, so don't refuse to send me an allowance. It's because of you that money isn't coming in. You silly daughter-in-law, get the boss and get out of here. You keep talking about your son sourly, but I'm the one earning one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. What? So I'm the one earning one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I think the tax return you saw was mine. What are you talking about? There's no way low-educated housewife like you could earn that much, right? 
even if he is an office worker earning one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, he has to file a tax return. I really am the one earning the money. Did you check the name properly when you sell the tax return? I didn't, but it must be my son. No, I'm the one who's earning. My husband doesn't work, you see. My son isn't working. Don't lie to me. How can he live without working? That's the why I'm the breadwinner. There's no way. After all, my son is excellent, and his employer is a big company, right? There's no way he would quit easily. He didn't quit easily. Indeed, my husband's salary was good, but the job was very demanding. So what? So he quit because it was demanding. He became mentally ill. That's why he has been going to the hospital since last year. That's obviously a lie. When I visited your house, he came home in a suit, didn't he? He only did that so you won't find out he had quit his job. What? Why would he need to go to such lengths? You're really out of your mind. My son wouldn't quit his job without consulting me in the first place. It's because of your attitude, Helena. Stop it! Don't make up ridiculous lies just because you don't want to give me an allowance. You are trying to take control just because my son is kind, aren't you? It wouldn't work that way. I will make my son get divorced with you. Before I came over there, get your things in order and prepare to leave. Hey, did you guys move? Did you come all the way to our old house by any chance? So you really did move. Where are you now? I won't tell you. I called the company he works for, and you are right. He quit last year. So you understand, right? Who supports our family? Naomi, you were really the one earning. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry. I was under the impression that my son was the one earning. You are a housewife when you got married, right? I quit my job as a company employee, but I had my own business. Although it was only part time at first, my husband's health started to decline at the end of the year before last, and I started to earn seriously from last year. I see. I never thought you were such an incredible person, Naomi. I have a newfound respect for you. From now on, I accept you as my daughter-in-law. Is that so? About that Arwan thing. If you are earning that much, you should be fine with one thousand and five hundred dollars, right? I plan to get along from now on, and I'll take good care of you. No, please forget about us. What do you mean? I mean exactly what I said. Please consider us as non-existent. Why would you say something like that? I'm saying I accept you as my daughter-in-law. Do you accept me because I'm the one who has an income of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars? That makes me laugh. It's not really about that. You just have the talent, and you support my son, right? There's no way I can't acknowledge that. Well, thank you for acknowledging me. I will just take that sentiment. However, my husband and I never want to get involved with you again. I can't erase the years of tormenting my husband and the bullying you've done to me. What do you mean? 
Are you saying I tormented my son? I've never bullied you. The fact that you genuinely think in that way is scary. You have a hand in my husband's mental illness, you know? Me? You've been obsessed with the academic background and employment for years, haven't you? My husband had been living with that pressure all his life. And just when he thought he was finally free from it after getting a job, you started asking for money. No matter how much he worked, the money kept falling to you every month, and when my husband said life was tough, you cried and took his money. I thought my son was earning. He worked for a big company. I thought he was okay. Even if it's a big company, the salary of the company employee is not a huge amount. And even if he earns a lot, if he keeps giving money, it will be run out. Money is not infinite, you know. But you're different, aren't you? Since you're earning $150,000, I'm the mother of your husband and I'm asking for an allowance, right? I have no money to give someone who treat my husband like her own property and take his money. I can't consider a person who hysterically yelling and abuses my husband when things doesn't go her way, who only pretends to care for him as a mother. I was just expressing my opinion. Opinion? Is that just imposing? Have you ever listened to my husband's words? Do you think a person would go to his company if she couldn't contact him and enforce her will be considered as a mother? I get it. I was wrong. I won't do it anymore. Is that so? Well, even if you want to, I'll make sure you can't. Naomi, please don't say things like that. Please send me an allowance. I literally don't have enough for living expenses. I see, that's tough. Please regret your past self who exhausted your husband's inheritance. At this rate, even this month's payment will be difficult. I'm barely scrapping by on food and the electricity is about to be cut off. I won't be able to survive like this. I don't care. We're cutting ties with you. I'm sorry. I won't bother you again. I will never do anything that you dislike again. So you don't need an allowance, right? It's a nuisance and I don't want to do. That is... Can't I ask for a just a month? I promise there will be nothing after that. Just this month, and then just this month again next month. I know you've always taken money from my husband like that. That's why we're cutting ties with you. Your promises are not worth trusting. Please. Naomi, I'm truly sorry. I can't do it. I'm not the kind of wife who can please you. You know I'm not a person who doesn't understand things, right? It's pointless to accept more from a dumb, useless wife like me. After that, my mother-in-law started selling unnecessary items in her house, personal belongings she bought with father-in-law's inheritance and the money she took from my husband. Somehow she managed to get by that month, but I don't know how she'll get through next month and beyond. I've already blocked her from contacting my husband, and I'm ignoring her messages. I'll keep my phone unblocked for a while because I'm curious about her movements, but I intend to cut ties completely in a few months. I heard that my mother-in-law, finally realizing her situation, 
was deserted by the people who used to buy her ridiculously expensive items. With her extravagant spending and gravity, she must have been an easy target. I don't know what will become of her life from now on, but I hope she suffers more than she hurt my husband and belittled me as a worthless wife. Also, my husband is slowly becoming mentally stable now that he has been freed from his mother, a part of his stress. He's starting to be able to help with my work a little bit, and the frequency of his hospital visits is decreasing. That being said, I'm not expecting too much yet, and I plan to support him slowly. I want to work together, both in health and in sickness, hoping that my husband's new life will be happier than ever.